Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Recently, I was browsing the inventory at one of my local game stores, and I came across something that caught my eye. This broken Wii U console sold as is for just $13. Now, I knew a working Wii U in good condition could sell for over $150, and I figured it's been a while since we did an in-depth DIY project, so why not try my hand at fixing it up? Today, we'll be troubleshooting and repairing this bargain bin console to see if we can give it another life. Let's get to it! Now, just to completely level with you, I did spend a bit more than $13 at the shop. They were also offering this Wii U gamepad that had been traded in with the system for sale at $30 on its own. The gamepad was separated because it was in working condition, but it's also not without its own issues. You can see here that it has some very deep scratches on the screen that are pretty distracting. I figured I'd pick up the gamepad too, and see if we can get it back into shape as well. But first, as promised, let's troubleshoot the system itself. The note taped to the side of the console claims it does work, but just doesn't stay powered on. I figured in the best case scenario this might just be an issue with the power supply they used to test the console at the store. So to get started, I plugged in my own power adapter and booted it up just to see what we're working with. Surprise! Out popped a copy of Nintendo Land! Typically I would expect the store employees to remove any discs from consoles traded in and to sell them separately, but in this case we got lucky. Of course, it's not a huge value, but a loose copy of Nintendo Land is currently going for about $7, so that's already half of our buy-in price. Not bad. On top of that, check this out. This unit came with a digital copy of Mario Kart 8 pre-installed. And because Wii U purchases are tied to the console instead of the user, we now have the perfect title for testing. For a while, things were going great, and I thought I might have really lucked out and gotten a perfectly functional Wii U for a fraction of its cost. But after about 10 minutes, sure enough, the system shut off, with only a blinking red light where the blue power indicator should be. At this point, the console will not turn on again until it's unplugged and power cycled. I also noticed at this moment that the console itself was particularly warm, so I figured this is most likely indicative of an overheating issue. Taking a quick look at the Wii U troubleshooting info on Nintendo's website, we can confirm that this is probably the case. So, to rule out the most obvious possible culprit, I decided to boot up the console once again and check the main fan on the back of the case. And wouldn't you know it, the fan was not blowing air at all. This faulty fan could be the source of our issues, or it could be a deeper problem. But at the very least, we now have somewhere to start. Hey guys, just a quick interjection here. Um, as I was recording for this video, I was troubleshooting the system, and you know, I unplugged it and plugged it back in a few times, moved it around a bit. And at some point, the fan on the back of the system just started working again. I have no idea why, uh, but it seems to be working perfectly now. Uh, my best guess is maybe there was some accumulated dust or debris that was preventing that fan from moving properly. I have no idea, but in the interest of being thorough and frankly because it makes for a better YouTube video, I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing down and replace the fan anyway. It could possibly fail again in the future, so better safe than sorry. Back to the video! I ordered a replacement fan for about $10 on Amazon, and it even came with the tri-wing screwdrivers needed to open up the system. First, we unplug the Wii U from its power supply and locate the nine screws on its outer shell. There are eight screws concealed underneath these square plastic stickers, as well as one screw to hold in the system's internal clock battery. Unfortunately, we'll have to remove these square stickers to access the internals, but that's a small price to pay to get this guy up and running again. Once the screws and clock battery are fully removed, we can take apart the case. First, we slide off the side panel, remove three more screws that were hiding underneath, and then slowly remove the upper half of the main shell. We have to be very careful here to not snap off any parts of the plastic. If you're doing a similar repair at home and are struggling, check the description for a more detailed step-by-step -step teardown guide. Fortunately, after the shell is removed, the main fan is immediately visible and accessible. All we have to do is take out two more screws holding it in from the sides, and disconnect its cables. Then we pop in our new fan and do pretty much everything we just did in reverse. We secure the new fan with the two fan screws, slide back on the main cover, replace the three concealed screws we removed earlier, slide back on the side panel, and finally put back the clock battery and the final eight screws. Now before we check our work and make sure the system's functional, another issue I'd like to cover is cosmetic. 
As you might have noticed, this thing has seen better days, and it would certainly be worth more on the used game market if it looked nicer and didn't have all these hairline scratches. So for this sort of issue, I like to use a two-part car paint polish kit. I always have Quick's paint scratch remover on hand for console repairs like this one, but any two-part polish should probably do the job. The idea is that the first compound has fine abrasive particles to roughen up the entire surface evenly, and the second compound further polishes the plastic and leaves behind a smooth, glossy sheen. This is perfect for any gloss-coated consoles. I've personally used this method on a Wii, a Wii U, my PS2 Slim. Plenty of different consoles have exactly the same sort of shiny plastic finish. It might take a few treatments to really notice a difference, but eventually it should look much closer to new. Perfect. But what about the gamepad? Those scratches are particularly deep. At first I considered trying to fill the scratches with some sort of acrylic resin, but upon closer inspection they looked pretty rough, and I was worried it would just make them permanently visible underneath a new layer of plastic. Another option I considered was to use the same plastic polish we used earlier to kind of eat away at the highest layers of the touchscreen and get rid of those blemishes. To be clear, I do not recommend you do this at home. You're much more likely to damage your system if you're using an abrasive like this on a surface that isn't purely cosmetic, like a touchscreen. But in a pinch, it could work. I managed to make the scratches much less visible this way, and somehow it still seems to function. But we're not aiming for better here, we're aiming for perfect. Luckily for us, the Wii U's touchscreen is manufactured in two separate parts, the LCD panel itself and the touchscreen digitizer a thin layer of plastic which detects input from the gamepad's stylus. The digitizer is what is actually scratched here, not the display itself, and a replacement touch digitizer is only about 10 bucks. So why not do it the right way? I was a little nervous taking apart and really getting into the gamepad. It's got a ton of tiny wires and ribbon cables that are just begging to be snapped, bent, and damaged beyond repair. And you have to get through pretty much every piece of tech in this controller before you can actually access the screen itself. But because this gamepad was already a bargain at only 30 bucks, I figured I didn't have much to lose. Once again, if you're doing this repair at home and need some more detailed assembly instructions, check the link in the description to see the tutorial that I follow. With a sharp knife or spudger, the old worn out digitizer can be completely separated from the LCD panel. And here's our culprit. Into the trash it goes. At this point, all that's left to do is put on the new digitizer, connect all those little cables we unplugged in the process, and seal everything back up once again. Now for the real test. Does everything work? So far so good. I booted up our newly polished console, made sure the new fan was actually working this time, and played a bit of Mario Kart. I took a look at a real-time replay and let that run on loop to sort of stress test or benchmark the system. After waiting for over an hour, I found that the system was no longer warm to the touch and seemed to be working perfectly. Looks like our repair was a success! Between the console, gamepad, a new fan, and the new touch digitizer, I only spent about $63 on this Wii U. Considering that it also had a copy of Nintendo Land hidden inside, and that a Wii U is currently worth about $150 in good working condition, that's an overall increase of almost $100. Not bad for a few hours' work. And there you have it! It just goes to show you never know what sort of value you can find in the bargain bin. If you're looking to get into game collecting on a budget, refurbishing a broken or worn out console could help you save some cash and give that system a one-up for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching this Wii U repair video. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for watching and for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this one, here are two more videos you might like as well. As always, if you like what I do and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. And otherwise, I hope you look forward to the next one. Take care!